Shakira is my inspiration for Muppet. Shakira, you're completely correct. I'm not bad. You make a big old man. Should be my. Reading the side of my body. I'm on today. Out. I can see your body moving. This guy sounds like a little half moon. Half girl, half man? No, she, she, she says that later. She says half animal, half man. Oh, oh baby, when, when you talk, talk like that, that you make a woman go man. To be right. I keep on reading the signs of my body. I'm all the time. I'm such a beauty boy. I like to be a slow, don't you see, baby, baby this is perfecto. Well, I am not tonight, baby. What? What? I don't know, but we need to go karaoke and she needs to sing this song. Oh my gosh, if you could do, if we could go to like karaoke in a bar and you could like maintain the Muppet voice oh for God. the whole song without losing your shit, I would be dying. I would be doubled over we'll fucking peeing myself. Shakira, Shakira. All right. Ah! <laughs> Welcome to your secret segment, everybody. Oh. oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know where I'm going to start the edit of this video. Slash <laughs> secret <laughs> segment. So much good stuff. Um, Welcome. It's the month of May, yes. our anniversary month. We had originally thought about talking about what's good games memories in this secret segment, but then we talked about it on the podcast on... um our 52nd episode if you missed it please check it out mm -hmm. um so are you wearing a star wars shirt because may the 4th i hadn't intended it that way but i guess so yes, yes. i am okay cool it's uh the this the sith of may or the revenge of the the revenge of the, the revenge of the fifth, fifth. what oh, is it they're doing like a, a, there's yeah. another one too right yeah there's a bunch because Return of the sixth may the I don't know. I don't know. May the odds be ever in your favor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different franchise. Well but aware. welcome, everybody. Hi. Um, This is uh, an opportunity for you to hear us talk about some things that aren't necessarily video game related. Uh, we bring this to you, our awesome patrons, every month right here on patreon.com slash what's good games. Um, we are going to talk this month about childhood board games slash toys, toys. Mm -hmm. yeah so we were thinking about things that would be fun to maybe talk about and we have lots of memories about games that we played as kids and toys that we really loved as kids mm -hmm. i think we all do everybody out there listening i'm sure is instantly thinking of that game or that toy that you loved growing up and i certainly had quite a few that i dabbled with um Brittany, when you think of childhood toys or childhood games what's like the first thing that comes to mind for you Ooh, legos or my power ranger toys with my remote controlled megazord you started Ooh. fancy oh yeah they were i took them the bath with me and everything we were great friends and here i'm like lincoln logs no that's literally my <laughs> i was like lincoln logs i don't know if i ever had lincoln logs what? i remember wow. tinker toys that was my no lincoln logs were the basic no, ass bitch no, toy. i remember yeah, those I, I never it's had just like them. literally sticks of wood you yeah. can make like the same house over and over again yep i don't know if i ever had in my house i know i had friends who had them but tinker toys were my first like array or my first venture i should say into the building blocks of life i think i had like the entry level tinker toy and then like the pieces were so small mm -hmm. that my parents were like nope getting rid of this i remember there was a yellow the wheel was yellow and i liked it because it looked like a little thing of cheese mm, it does look like mm -hmm, cheese mm -hmm. and you got to build all sorts of weird wonky like things with the tinker I think we toys. only had lincoln logs though Something wrong with that. Was that going to be your answer? Lincoln Logs? For like the, like one of the first things I remember playing with. Yeah, definitely Lincoln Logs. And we, again, we made the same blueprint house like over and over again. I don't think I ever followed any blueprints. It wasn't a blue. No, I meant like we just were like, this is how you make oh, this house. Like, see, we just there learned were very how to limited make ways you could put the Lincoln Logs together. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one way and that was it. Unless you got like super creative. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were a big Barbie household. Oh, yeah. So my grandmother has been collecting Barbie dolls for 40 years now. That's a lot. Uh, and she has some really amazing, like, old antique Barbies. 
Uh, she, so she has a couple different trunks of them and she keeps a lot of them in in storage in her attic. And whenever we would come over and spend the day or, or the afternoon at my grandmother's house, we'd always ask my grandpa to get like the Barbies down. And some Barbies we got to play with out of the box and Ooh, other Barbies they, never no. came out of the box. We just looked at them through the window and Longingly. admired their beautiful hair and it was always something that we did like every time we went to my grandmother's house. And then we had me and my sister both had like a, a crazy collection of dolls um, at the house. And then my grandfather built us a custom dollhouse. That's awesome. Which was really amazing. And it had like a little kitchen mm -hmm. with like little mini, mini tiny food things. And it had like a little bedroom and a little bathroom. And it was like a three story That's like custom crazy. built dollhouse. I wonder if Barbies and grandmothers is just like a thing. Because my grandma also, I completely forgot about this until you start talking about it. Christmas, one of my presents besides video games would be like a, a be very beautiful like Barbie, like a Christmas Barbie or something like that. And I have a collection of Barbies somewhere that I haven't seen in years. And I, those ones I weren't able to take out of the box. But I also had my, like, my case of naked Barbies. I would like, the hair was all mat matted and tangled. And I had a little trunk full of clothes I would dress them up in. I had gymnastics Barbie, which I thought was the fucking best Barbie ever. Because yeah. you can make her do like splits and shit. I didn't have I didn't have a lot of Barbies. I had almost I don't think I had any Barbies. Um, mm -hmm. my grandmother gave us Cabbage Patch dolls. Oh yeah. But the interesting thing is she gave every one of her grandchildren a Cabbage Patch doll that looked like them except for me. So like everyone got one. Like if you had you know yeah um brown hair and brown eyes, like she would give you a brown haired brown eyed Cabbage Patch doll. She gave me a red headed green eyed bar or Cabbage Patch doll. Huh. She's trying to like tell you some some maybe i was the redheaded stepchild notes. that she didn't like <laughs> right i don't know but what's funny about that is that now i realize as i play video games i tend to make redheaded green-eyed characters grandma knew it's weird she knew no i think it's because of that i think oh. it's some weird <laughs> repressed childhood shit i don't know but it's like it's funny when you think about it, you're like oh weird like that's kind of huh. that's strange my other favorite doll i can't call it a doll pound puppies Pound puppies were great. I remember pound puppies. And you never knew how many you would get in the mama yep. puppy. The mama true. dog, I should say. And so yeah. you split that bitch open with that Velcro and pull them out. Had a little C-section. Had a little C-section on the spot. And you would get your little puppy. So these were, these were if you don't really like, what the hell are these things. If they were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were dog stuffed animal toys. but with more stuffed animal toys inside. Inside them. And you would, they were like blind. Think of it as like a loot box. It was a blind <laughs> box dog toy. Yeah. Yep. You never knew what you were going to get inside. Maybe you would and get kittens, two twins. Cats. Oh, and the kittens. Yeah. You might get two. You might get three. You might just get one. They might look identical. They might not. Yeah. And it was it always was a, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I Did remember. You yeah. guys ever have popples? No. It's a popple. So it was like mm. a weird stuffed toy where the nose had, um, the one I remember specifically had like a bag. It was a bag of popcorn and there was loose popcorn all around and you would squeeze the stomach. Oh, wait, sorry. This is a different one. Oh. We also had these. The popples. Oh, sorry, I mixed them up. So the popples were ones where like you could roll it into a ball on itself. There was another one where it was like a toy bear. But you would squeeze the stomach and like the loose popcorn would fly around and you. it was basically like a mini game and you'd have to like try and get the popcorn bits into the popcorn holder in his nose. Huh. I don't remember what they were called. I remember those one games that they would be little like games you sit on your desk and you would have Let's to see if I can look this up. hit the buttons and it would do a little and the games themselves were filled with water and little popcorn things and there were little paddles that you would push the button and it would go like this and the little things. They would, were called nosy bears. Uh, nosy bears? Yes. Hmm. Huh. I don't remember either of these things. They looked like this. Oh, God, those, are, those are scary looking, Simer. And like you would play, like the nose was kind of a game. At least the one I had, oh. the nose was a That, that looks was like something out of Five Nights so at Freddy's. So like, it looks like a Care Bear with like an air pop on its nose. Yes. And then you would push down on the thing and then like the little thing would bounce up inside yes, of it. exactly. That's horrifying. <laughs> we, we had a lot of weird, weird ass toys. That's horrifying. So we also had Care Bears a lot. Care Bears. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of Care Bears. Lots of My one. Little Ponies. With Pop Rainbow Bright. That's scary. Lots of that. There's nothing but, to um, about that. It, it's so interesting thinking about the transition of toys from when we were kids, like um, like elementary school age, into yeah. what you transitioned into, into middle school. And so I think about the time, the hours upon hours I spent with my sister playing board games. Did you guys ever play the um, the Babysitter's Club game? No, I read no, the we books. We wanted it. I read <laughs> the books, and I th like there was a lot of games we wanted. 
But we ended up with like Risk and uh, Risk. Lots of hours spent playing Risk. Uh, did you play the game of life? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I life love is, that it's game. It's still one of my favorite board games to yeah. play. And I thought it was so cool how I had the elevated hills and stuff into the board yes. game. Like, we're talking old school life, right? You'd be like, oh. I need to be a doctor. Yeah, and you, you put your little that pegs. Money. Did little you guys ever play Mall Madness? No. no. Oh, I loved that game. What was the one with the, with the mice? Um,. Oh gosh! Nice. So you would move, you would little, move a little mice around, and oh come on, I'll figure this out. One Game more. with mice. <laughs> this is gonna. No, it was it was like a very well known game at the time. Um, mouse trap. Oh, oh mouse yeah. Trap. I feel like I played it at a friend's house, but we never, we did not own this game. So I remember very vividly, I was at a friend's house, and we were playing mouse trap, and your mice get caught in these little traps if you land on the wrong space or whatnot. Yeah. And I remember my mouse kept getting like caught in these traps, but I didn't do it. And I always thought that maybe my mouse was like, it was like a self-propelled mouse because I didn't understand. I was Kamikaze like, dumb. mouse? Mall madness. Mall madness. Yes. No, I knew it. Yeah, like it talks. And then I found out my friend was selling it cheating. on Etsy for $125, Whoa. you guys. 1989 vintage. Price. Girl talk. Girl talk. I want to desperately play. I definitely play that. And you would get the little zits. Oh, it, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you get zits? No, they were little red stickers. And if you didn't want to answer a question, I believe, you would have to put little zit stickers. Can we find this game and play it? Oh, my gosh. I think that sounds like a good plan. Okay, because that sounds amazing. Yeah, that was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. I'll answer whatever. It's like, so have you ever seen, this is a a little bit of a tangent, but I just think it's funny that, like, oh, if you don't want to answer a question, you get a zit. Um, The James Corden, is that his name? The late night show guy where it's like, spill your guts or fill your guts. And I'm like, I would answer literally whatever you wanted. Like, whatever you want to know, I'll fucking tell you. I'm not putting any of that shit in my mouth. I don't know. Some of the questions, like, on national television. I would answer. <laughs> really? 100%. Rather than eat a fish eye, yes, I will tell you, you guys, whatever you need I feel to know. like we need to play this game with Steimer then. Stickers. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's red dots. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys ever have a game or a toy that incited fights? with your like cousins or siblings or friends like anything that was like that made you get like mad because you were like losing or did you guys ever had but it wasn't losing like um we had two different like mini fig um toy ish things that we would fight over like who whose was what and it was Polly pocket oh, I loved and then Polly pocket. also the littlest pet shop oh, I, I never did those. littlest pet shop but I did Polly pocket so I never had brothers or sisters growing up. So it was always just me and my parents playing games. And, you know, they were good sports. And, you know, they sometimes let me win a few times. As long as I was the thimble monopoly, I was good. Uh, but I would play games with my cousin, who was also an only child. And the closest thing I can say I had to a brother growing up. And he, and I was a very passive, like, submissive, like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry, child. And so I would get che- – I don't want to say cheated on because that sounds so bad. But my cousin would cheat when he would play games. Yeah. He would take advantage. He would take advantage. And yeah. I was like, it's just a game. But it's fine. And I that's why that was the only time I ever remember getting real frustrated while playing board games. It's because he would blatantly cheat. But okay. I was too like scared to say anything. Yeah. I don't like cheaters. Cheaters are bad. Cheaters are real bad. It's bad enough when you lose fair and square, but then if someone's cheating, it's double it's bad. Good. What about Tamagotchis? Oh I never my was into Tamagotchi. God. Yeah? It was huge, I remember, but I never did it. My mom found our old ones. Their oh, batteries yeah. are dead, but I was impressed she found them. Like we care, we had that shit everywhere. Like we took it to class. Like that was a thing that they didn't get banned from. They school? didn't get banned. Oh, they got banned from my school. I mean, I don't know if they eventually did, but they didn't for a while because I remember taking it mm-hmm. um, and just being like, "Oh my god, this is my like little. This is my pet." <laughs> Even though I had real pets. Yeah, I had a tom. <laughs> <laughs> I had real animals. I had real animals. We had a dog. But that we tamagotchi had cats. man. That, that tamagotchi, tamagotchi really needed me more than the. Fun so animals. obviously there was tamagotchi, but then there were a whole bunch of other spinoffs of the tamagotchi, and I had one in particular where it was a cat, and. It got banned at school, so my mom had to take her take it to work. And then her and all of her coworkers were, like, fussing over this little, like, cat Tamagotchi thing. And they cared about it so much. Every time it was hungry, they would feed it from, like, a poop. You had to, like, take care of it. Yep, clean and it I remember up. one time I got off of school, and my mom was like, Britt, the cat died. Talking about the fucking, like, and I thought it was, like, our real cat. And Wait, I was you had a real cat? cat? Yeah, we had a real cat. <laughs> and I thought it was, like, our real cat, but it was a fucking Tamagotchi pet. And they were all so <gasps> devastated and sad over it. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's so funny. Yeah. Okay, speaking yeah, of. Yeah, no, we had, so, I think I've told this story at least partially. But one of the games we played a lot, computer games, was Cats with a Z and Dogs oh, yeah, with yeah, a Z. Oh, yeah, yeah, I played those too. And so we got, like, similarly weird, like, 
my sister and I, this was the one thing we sort of bonded over and she did, we made a website. I learned HTML to build a website mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that we could put these pet files on the internet and build our own kennel. <laughs> and she, it, it was the stupidest shit. And I don't know how my parents were like, okay with this because we were basically just talking to a bunch of strangers on the internet. We had like this one friend who was in Canada and she was she was way older than us. She was in her twenties and she was playing this game. We were, yeah. we were like twelve or thirteen. We were like, "This is our friend." I forget what her name was. Flo and so, and she like told us how she ran her kennel, and we like copied the model basically, and then mil- built our own kennel called Fantasy Island Pets, which you can't find, so don't bother looking for it. Hmm. Um, because I've already looked. But <laughs> I was like, "Does this it's still gone exist?" Forever. No, it's gone. <laughs> um. But that game was just really funny to me because it was similar in like like to a Tamagotchi. Like, we're playing with these virtual pets. We have real pets yeah, yeah. over here. But, like, we're going to run this online kennel instead. And I like those games. Yeah. Speaking of taking care of things. Furbies. You had a Furby? Yeah. You ladies didn't have a Furby? No. Oh. I was too old for Furbies. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I had a, it was a little, bit, a little bit past my time. I had a Furby. And it was neat. Did it was, do the scary it, things? I think so. So I'm trying to think of like when I think about my Furby, what kind of experience that I have with it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a lot more interactive than it would have probably really was. The thing that freaked me out about the Furby is in the middle of the night, it would start going like, wow, and like start making random fucking noises. Yeah, they're scary as they're fuck. They're scary. So Furbies. I remember sh- like piling a bunch You're of like, blankets Shh. on it because to make them go to sleep, you had to fucking cover their eyes and shit because it has the sensor it's on like it. like a bird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would put like three or four blankets in front of it. Exactly. It's like a bird. And, you sh- and I would shove it in the closet and just w- lay awake for hours like expecting it to like start talking. Why and didn't you just get rid of it? If it was know. causing you sleepless nights. I didn't know any better. <laughs> Sounds like something you should get rid of. I absolutely agree. And I don't know what happened to it. Something eventually happened to it. Like a hammer happened. You died in fire. Believe- so like we're- Furby's just like, you're like, nah, I'm too old for that I shit. Was- I think I was in high school when those came out, and I was like, that was not a thing I was into. Oh, fair enough. All right. Um, I have a story about a very classic game okay. called the Ouija board. Oh. oh, yeah. I was hoping that somebody would tell a Ouija so board. So, my dad had a collection of very, very old games, like from when he was a kid, like from like the 1960s or whatever. And they were in a closet, like in the basement. And I was like, just like ruffling around down there as kids are wont to do is to get into things that they're not supposed to. Uh, And I found the Ouija board and I was like, oh, hey, we should play this. And so I I took it out and um, my dad had a friend uh, named Brian who had these two kids because they were both divorced and they both had two kids. And so we would get together and we would like do play dates with these kids and um, the four of us, me, my sister, and these two kids were in the basement. Of course. And the, they were upstairs like watching football or something. Of course. Um, and I pull the game out and we sit down and we like, I go get a candle and we like turn the lights out and we have the Ouija board out. And we, of course, started out by playing, just like dicking around asking yeah. stupid questions. And uh, there were three girls and one, and one boy in our group. And so uh, the boy, we would... Um, start to ask questions about like what's the name of his girlfriend or who is he dating because we were like eight or nine yeah. years old you know that's stupid age mm-hmm. yeah. um and he just of course just kept getting like m- angrier and angrier like because we were like poking fun at him because in a rare situation where there were like three girls mm-hmm. against one guy yeah, yeah. Um, and he got so mad that he like started yelling and started throwing stuff and my dad like storms down. I was like, what are you kids doing? He like grabs the game and like breaks it and oh. like goes and like, it's like, I'm getting rid of this and like throws it in the trash. And we were all like, oh, well, we were just having fun. It was just a stupid game. Yeah. You know, and we all like kind of are sulking and we have to like go to the room, our room and like take like a timeout or whatever. <laughs> and then like three weeks later, I'm like, in the same I go back to like the same closet mm-hmm. and the Ouija board is back in the closet. What? What? Did he take and it I out of the saw garbage? him throw it in the trash. You know that he like took it out of the trash and brought it back. I mean, he must have, right? But, yeah. You know, I never out. actually asked him. Ah, she be like, so maybe I should text him and be like, "Hey dad, do you remember that, that one time? Board? You remember that Ouija board?" 
Oh yeah, it but like guy. it freaked me, freaked me oh, out though when I saw sure. it in the closet because yeah. I was like, "Holy oh, shit, shit, it's back!" <laughs> the ghost brought it back because I thought for sure that it was in the it was in the in the landfill. It was going yeah, on. yeah. Nope. But guess not. I have a weird back Ouija in the board closet. story too. I we didn't I didn't own this Ouija board. Um, Did you actually like push on the? On the thing on the Ouija I board. I wasn't one of the people. It was a large group of girls. I was yeah. not one of the people on the board. Holding holding, holding the, the, board. Mm-hmm. the little dial Lens thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that there's anybody out there that doesn't know what a Ouija board is. Or, oh, But yeah. in case you don't. Yeah. Like the idea is that you're like contacting spirits. Like or like ghosts in other realms or whatever. And there's a, a board that's got letters and numbers on it. And then there's like a little magnifying glass with a, a viewing hole. It's like a little triangle. Right. And then you ho- the idea is that you put your hands on it and you let the like spirit lightly move it around the board yeah but it was always like one of those things where like somebody Someone's was pushing it yeah. right it. yeah um so we were at this was like a big summer party at my friend geneva's house and we were all in the basement because where else would you do this and you know like a similar thing like had the candles and it was dark yeah. <laughs> and as a i can't remember like what they were asking it was like spirits hello and ran there was three things that happened one was explained the other two were just really fucking weird um as we're starting a extremely loud explosion happens somewhere in the neighborhood like it sounds like a giant fire like you know the the m the m60s or something like the fireworks that just explode they don't actually like make Mm -hmm. they don't do anything other than make a loud noise Mm -hmm. but it was nowhere near like a time where that would be appropriate to have right so it was just a random one-off and nothing happened after that it was just a random one-off firework going off like somebody's like like, propane tank somewhere somewhere yeah something's happened there was no ever, like, there were no, we didn't hear sirens or anything after, so it was just, like, a really weird random mm-hmm. explosion noise. And then, this was just her brother, which we figured out, but, like, I guess the the way the vents worked, like, if you talked into one, like, it kind of made a noise down at the other one. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, they made some weird noises as we were doing that. But then the <laughs> other thing that happened that freaked me out the most was we'd made a circle. And then... Um, like as we were like f- getting freaked out by these other things, we turn on the lights and there's like this black bug thrashing about in the middle of the circle. And I was like, Nope, I'm out of here. And I just huh. left. Like I like went home. It was just like a, like an insect. Just like a weird, like a, it was like a larva. There was Ew. like a black larva in the middle of this Ouija board circle thrashing about in the middle of it. And I was like, I'm out like this. I, I have zero interest nope. in being part of whatever this is. Like, yeah. Yikes. That's gross. gross. Really weird. And gross. That's yeah. I've seen too many like, scary really movies. I'm really glad I don't have a Ouija board in my house. I've seen too many scary movies, and it's like, nope, no, no, no. Did you did you ever play with a Ouija board? I did, and I, I don't necessarily even really believe that you can contact spirits and stuff like that. It's just like when you've seen so many fucking scary movies, like I have. Oh, yeah. you're a little tainted. You're a little you're a little ruined. You get a little freaked out. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking here at like top toys from the childhood era. Bop it. I had bop a bop it. it. Bop it. Mm-hmm. Twist it. Pull, Pull it. it. Crank it. Or Crank it. I, I like Bop It. I never, it, we actually still sell them. We saw it today when we were uh, purchasing our Magic 8 Ball for our E3 prediction yeah. show. Amazing. Okay, next. Sky Dancers? No. Oh. We had those things where you'd is. like stick them to the, throw them to the wall and they were like sticky. So Sky Dancers were those little. They were the things that like would helicopter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. You would pull the string Sky and you would like go and go. And, and it would like, like hit people and it would go fucking sideways and you never. It was a liability. All the toys oh, yeah, created in the eye. 80s and 90s were designed to kill us. That it's a miracle right. we all survived. Uh, Easy Bake Oven. Nope. We all know we, we didn't have that because we had the Patreon video about it. And how yeah. We failed miserably. I think. Baking anything in that. I think the first toy Bake I remember. Pastries with a light. But they don't actually cook. That's the point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like baking like, with this fucking studio light. Yeah. Well, I mean, these studio lights are probably get a lot hotter than the light inside <laughs> the easy bake <laughs> oven. That's true. Especially this guy, the 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 hair light in the studio, that shit gets real hot. Yeah. yeah, we might actually be able to cook something with that. I think the first toy that made me realize that I was old and too cool for that craze was the Tickle Me Elmo. Oh, I was, was way too old. Like, yeah, was yeah that was made like for little kids because that came out when I was in middle school. When did that come out? It's like it came up probably what was that in the early nineties, mid nineties, nineteen ninety six. Yeah. Wow. So I was only eight, but I was like at that weird point where like, am I too cool for this? I'm too cool for this. See, nineteen ninety six, I was older. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to do the math. I'm like, how old was I? I'm like, uh, things are fucking terrifying. I remember KB Toys would sell out. I was 11. eleven. Yeah. 
I was not into Tickle Me Elmo. Well, no, you were, you, had, you were far too cool for that at the time. For stuffed animals, yeah. I remember the craze was insane, though. People were all about fucking Tickle Me Elmo. It was like the shit that just... Oh, yeah, bloop. It was like... That was the the crazy gift at Black Friday that year that yeah. like drove people yeah. mad trying other. to get it for their kids. I remember that laugh. It's like embedded in my <laughs> head. <laughs> that tickles. And then there's like a brief silence and he fucking starts vibrating. He's like... <laughs> And he freaks and out. It's, like, it's real bad. Are you having an orgasm? Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> me all having Maybe. an orgasm. Um, Never know. Did, did you guys have beanie babies? Yeah, yeah. I was about to say beanie babies. So beanie babies were a, a contentious thing in my family because my, as I mentioned, my grandmother uh, collected Barbie dolls, yep. but she got on this kick with beanie babies because the first so many edition ones. Yeah, because so many people were making just a fortune selling them on eBay. Because that's really when eBay was becoming like right. a really big thing. Yeah. And I never really got into them. Like I was gifted them a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And I had like a collection of like maybe like 10 of them. Yeah. But my grandmother had like hundreds Because that was going to be your oh, yeah. retirement when you were older. Yeah, yeah man. Know. Like everyone thought that the, the Beanie Babies were going to be worth it. And I think now there's like a dozen of them that are actually still worth something. But the vast majority of them are like, nope, Crazy. it's just, yeah, just no, a stuffed animal. We Yeah, we similar uh my grandmother collected them but i think we ended up only getting a few that were gifts from her so we had like four yeah yeah i didn't care about they were all cats and they were cute i remember being jealous of my friends who had a very like impressive collection of beanie beanie babies because i thought for sure they would grow up to be rich because they'd be able to sell those off i know isn't that funny their best life we thought our lion king cars were going to be worth something one day like we were Mm -hmm. like no it's okay mom like we got this this is a really good investment. We bought this notebook. We filled it out. Like, this is going to be worth money, and it's worth nothing. nothing. Literally nothing. I don't think I ever kept anything that I thought was going to make me a profit someday. Like, mm-hmm. a, a, a collectible anything that I was like, oh, I got to keep this. Maybe, like, a couple of coins or something. <laughs> but like Sacagawea dollar. Oh. My grandmother gave mm-hmm. me one of those. She was like, "Keep this; it'll be worth more." And then you're like, it's it, now it's dollar. worth now it's worth fifteen dollars." Is it? I don't know. I was like, "I'm pretty know. sure it's just it's so few. It's so few coins, crazy. you know, like accrue accrue value to where they're actually like a worthwhile investment. Mm-hmm. Same yeah. with like stamps and all that garbage. But like, it's interesting to think about just how far we've come and the types of games that we played as kids versus like the types of games that kids are playing today. <laughs> You know, if you yeah. look at like, like 1988 to like now? 2018, you know, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, so I have a three year old nef- nephew who's turning four uh, next month and he plays with an iPad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that. It still blows my mind. I'm like, my dad can't figure out how to do this shit. And he's like, I mean, yeah. I understand like the girl up with it. But yeah, just playing games like it's nobody's business. It's like, damn, I don't like it. It freaks me out. I don't like it when babies are using iPads. It, like, it's just a little it's weird. A weird. It's a weird thing for me. Mm-hmm. And it like kind of freaks me out. And I'm like, why? You were a baby. Like, you what are, are you doing? Baby. I like it when it keeps them quiet. Then I'm oh, into yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think there's obviously a lot of great educational games that are out there for, for young kids. But I think that it's interesting to kind of just see where the toy market has gone. Obviously, you know, the, the sad departure of Toys R Us. Officially yeah. closing all their doors. Yeah, but they kind of deserved it. Why? There Why do you think that? There was a lot of people. I'm mean, granted, I didn't shop there for a very long time, but there were people who did. Were like they overpriced everything. Like you could get things cheaper elsewhere, and you're like, well, why would you buy it there? Unless they price match, yeah. I mean, yeah, brick like, and mortar is like that? going to buy. <laughs> why you do that? Unless you want like the, the instant convenience <laughs> of it, you know, like go to a store and you buy something and you have it. You don't have to wait two days because we don't got time to wait for two days. Ain't these nobody days. got time for that. No. Yeah, like, what do Mm-mm. kids play with these days? But it's, like, iPads. iPads. Like, what are, like, the physical toys? I've seen Dominoes still be a thing. Dominoes? Love Dominoes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, yeah. Legos? Because I'm trying to think Lego. of, like. Legos are still a thing, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Stuff that, like, my cousin's kids play with. Hot Wheels are still really big. Really? Still that's really good. big, yeah. My, uh, my nephew loves Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather had a Hot Wheels collection. Like, so you, like, open up, hit one of those special cases with put the door down they all had like their little box yeah. oh my god inside of it it's it was like a little garage it was like a, it was like a yeah it was like a hot wheels suitcase yeah exactly did you ladies uh, ever have a talk boy or talk girl what is that they're um 
these things from the Home Alone movie. They like made their little cassette. We had walkie talkies. talkies. Well, okay, that works too. Not really. I feel like this is all stuff that was before Steimer, like was after Steimer and I's time as kids. You didn't have walkie talkies? No. Well, I, didn't have, I didn't have that specific Well, not that thing. walkie talkies are like, obviously the walkie talkies are from like what, the 70s <clears> or whatever? Yeah. So talk we point. accidentally like tuned into a frequency we should not have been able to tune in. Oh, no. And got yelled at. So it's, and we were like, Wah! well, let's see. <laughs> Talk Boy came dogs. out in the early 1990s, and it was uh, originally conceived as a non-working prop for the 1992 Home Alone film. So it probably came out like not too long after that. But what was so cool about it is you got to record stuff with it. So you could put your little blank cassette in there, and you would record things. And then you could speed up the volume or slow it down. So you would get someone talking like this, or you get someone talking really, really quick. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I remember my dad had an obsession with – uh, Mambo number five, the song, and oh he would God. sing it, and he'd be real embarrassed, but he would just sing it anyway. And so I remember like hiding out with my talk girl, like waiting for him to sing this song, and then I would record him on the cassette and then play it back, and he was real embarrassed about it. Talk girl was a fantastic thing, and it was pink. Oh my God, do you guys remember Guess Who? Yes. Yeah. Does I your character have a mustache? Still buy it. I know. Uh, Guess Who, Shoots and Ladders, Candyland, all classic games. Hungry, hungry hippos. Hungry, hungry, hungry hippos. hippos. Hungry. Connect four. Connect four. Um, oh my god! Hold on. Gosh, Pictionary. There's lots of so many apps or apps for all this stuff now. Uno. I never really. We played Barrel of Monkeys every once in a while. But I didn't really like that game. No. <laughs> oh. Oh man. These were the days. Yep. God, yeah. these guys were always really creepy. Yeah. Hungry, hungry hippos. Oh, God. There are some good ones out there. Operation always freaked me out as a game. I, I never, hated that I game. Can't. Made me too nervous. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to get buzzed. Nope. Right? It no. was the worst. Operation was real bad. Game. Um, I'm trying to look at what else What else that I... Ooh, Trouble. I, didn't like I that played game. a lot of Trouble. I yeah. liked that game. Oh, yeah. Trouble like the was thing great. with the pop in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that that's was what the best I was part. Of. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Furbies are so scary. Monopoly is an interesting game because obviously that game's been around for Ever. decades and decades. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, long before, I mean, my dad was playing it when he was a kid. He played with me and my sister, and the games would last forever. Yes. And he would beat us so badly that we would cry every time we played that no. game. He would never let us win. Did you guys have parents that were that were like that? Did they let you win or did they just like beat you mercilessly? My dad would always give me advice when we're playing. He's like, well, this is what you could. Because I was never a competitive kid growing up. So I didn't mind playing against someone as long as we weren't being like real assholes to each other. You know, yeah. like, well, what would you in this situation? I would do that. Oh, you landed on boardwalk with a hotel. I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah, there was for the most part, I think they didn't treat us like anything other than like uh, the regular opponents and the only reason i say that is because there was one game that wasn't monopoly but it was risk and i was the little i'm the littlest of the family Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason no one was paying attention to me and (gasps) so i just built up like this entire i basically somehow managed to get secure asia in the first fucking round like no one was paying attention to what I was doing. I don't know why. What game? And uh, risk. Oh, and I just huh. destroyed everyone in the family. But it was just them just being like, oh, like whatever. She's God knows what she's doing. They they were all like fighting over the same area, and I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna fucking take this whole. Re- okay, great. I have an army, and I destroy all of you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Like, <laughs> that's how I feel about um, wow. Ticket to Ride now, because that's a really fun game. I feel like that uh, that I think is becoming like a, a modern classic. Mm. Have you guys played Ticket to Ride? Mm-mm. There's a lot of uh, expansions for it now, too. And so essentially, it's just like a... It's one of those games that you can be sneaky and I take over routes, too. So instead of, like, taking over countries and having amassing armies, you essentially build, like, a railroad track and you take over these different lines. Ah. Um, it's really, it's a really fun game. And it has, like, pretty deep strategy once you get, get the hang of it, like most board games. I think um, my favorite board game was Candyland. I just liked game. all the colorful stuff. I like the colorful land. stuff, and it was all candy, like like Willy Wonka. I played this game called Takeoff. Oh my god, Gloppy the Chocolate. Remember this shit, Grandma <laughs> Nut. And it was a geography game, <laughs> and, and you like, had to build flight paths. Oh. I, don't, I don't remember this game at all. Oh god, I want to play Candyland. Takeoff mm-hmm. involves getting your fleet of up to four airplanes from one side of a 
what of a mercur a mercurator projection style roll up map board to the oh, other before anybody forest. else can do the same. I want peppermint ice cream. Mm, peppermint ice cream sounds pretty damn good. But yeah, I remember we played this all the time because it was one of the few board games we had in the house. Man, I want to have like a like a nineties night where you just do nothing but like old school shit. I'll make pogs. I want to make some custom pogs. That's what I, I think I still do. have my old pogs. Yeah, I have my binder, and I had a pog maker, so I'd go through like my old Nintendo Power magazines and like find face like Mario's face and like put that on a pog, and I was like, yes, yeah. fucking badass. If I was, I don't even remember how to play pogs. I never played them. I just created the pogs. It wasn't you had to have the the dunker or the slammer or whatever it was well, called? Yes, yeah. the slammer. Is and you would called? hit the, the so. side yeah. of it, and they would flip or yeah. something. I could like that. I was what, I, I just collected. We I didn't. Do, I didn't collect pogs. I'm going to look this up now, how to play Pogs. I, I definitely collected them. I had like a little sleeve, like yes. a little tube of them that I'd carry around Yeah, school. get a Pog and a, get some Pogs and a Slammer. Compare your Pogs. Decide whether or not you're going to play for keeps. Find a good surface. Each player puts an equal number of Pogs on the stack. Stack the Pogs face down. Flip to see who goes first. Hold the hammer of the Slammer correctly. Oh, okay, now it's to give me fucking photos. This isn't what I want. Hold the Slammer. And then take turns slamming the stack. Take your slammer in whatever grip you've chosen. Forcefully slam it down at the top of the stack of pogs. Let it go as it makes contact. If you hit it correctly, many of the pogs should flip over onto the other side. And you collect all of the ones that you flipped. And I guess you just keep going this until you... sounds like a dumb game. Hey, you know what? We didn't have a lot of technology back in the no, day. No, I'm well aware. <laughs> had no technology in back in the day. <laughs> I remember when the Game Boy came out and it like changed everybody's life. Oh, oh yeah. My God. The Game Boy and I were one. Yeah, that was a good time. Carried that shit everywhere i had all the extensions for it like the light and like the, we had the printer did you have the printer oh hell yeah i had the printer i didn't print anything oh but i still I have all my stickers i got the printer we weren't fancy I don't enough know to why get the, the printer fuck we got the printer it was a waste of with money. the camera the game boy camera and then you would take <laughs> yeah. the selfies and we print know, them out we took no pictures with it, uh, it no? really cool. i don't remember this at all oh no it was printer. Games. yeah yeah well, ladies, this wow. has been a fun little trip down memory lane. Yeah. It makes me want to go play some, some board games. I actually have Mass Effect Risk, which I've been dying to play with you oh, every yeah, time you come into town. That. And we ha haven't cracked it open. Yeah. Tonight's the night. No, probably no, not. I'm not. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this has been fun. Let us know in the comments on, on the Patreon post what classic games or classic toys you guys really loved. If there's anything that we mentioned that you guys are like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. So thank you so much for, for supporting us and for being a secret segment patron at patreon.com slash what's good games. And we hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the, 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 the chat and we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye. everybody.